its covers, bullets continue to spray overhead. I've got a roar with anger because of, give me some sort of inspiration. Well, uh, all of your people are dead. So imagine if all of the SLT were... <laughs> no, I'd love. Right, so we're doing the Andy is silent bit. I'm sorry, the bit silent Andy is silent, shout. followed by roar. But <laughs> dual wield, so, so what, how do you expect me to be? Well, kind of dual... like that. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Just think of Terminator. Like that. Oh, exactly. yeah. Matt, can you explain what we're filming today? Well, what we're filming today is a road safety video because we are responsible young members of the upstanding community. The upstanding community? I suppose the upstanding members of the young community. Always Wear a Seatbelt has been a big project for Lion Films. Uh, we've actually been working on it for over six months. It was originally planned to be just sort of a driving video, but we turned it into this whole story involving um, some interesting cameos um, and, and a load more extras than we initially thought that we would have. We shot all the driving sequences uh, in Always Wear a Seatbelt last summer in the Isle of Wight, um, and we used uh, a 250cc buggy uh, it's got a motorbike engine, it's very basic, no ABS, um, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, we spent quite a lot of time just driving around, um, sort of doing as close as we could to drifts. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, they actually took three days as, uh, as a whole to film, um, which is a long time, because we had to do so many different angles of the driving. We wanted to get as much sort of variation so it could be fast cutting, um, which I think really pays off in the film. We wanted to try a few new things when we were filming on the buggy, uh, including doing various angles where the camera was attached to the buggy. Before we went to the Isle of Wight, I did a bit of research into how um, these kind of rigs are done in professional films. And how they actually get the shots in professional films is actually quite surprising. Uh, they use a variety of different rigs. Uh, one that I found was called the Ultima Arm, and it's a giant camera crane, a uh, technocrane, attached to uh, an SUV or a a sort of sports car and it's driven around uh, and there's, an op there's several operators inside, one controls the movement of the arm, one controls the movement of the camera um, and the, the, this crane can go all the way around uh, the car uh, so you can do low angles, high angles and they sort of follow cars around doing these shots. It's a really expensive bit of kit, it's, it costs a lot of money just to hire it for a day um, and so it's really only available to people doing big budget productions of it. And obviously we didn't have the sort of resources to be able to do that. Uh, so we tried to improvise and get some interesting angles. One thing we did was we tried cutting out some wood and tried attaching it to the side of the car. It didn't really work out that well. Um, another thing we tried was putting the tripod on the bonnet, um, which also didn't go too great. The footage was really wobbly uh, and it did look like it was going to fall off um, most of the time. One thing that we did do uh, successfully is mount the camera at the back of the car looking forwards. Uh, so you get this really cool onboard sort of point of view like you're driving with uh, the protagonist uh, within the film. It's looking out the front of the car uh, so you get this sort of view around of what you see what he's seeing. Sarah, what's your opinion on the future of Lion Films? I think Lion Films is going to go... This is going to go crazy. I can't even describe it to you. like. Honest to God, it's going to be bigger than Warner Brothers. Well, it's been it's been long, cold, but we're going to hold some guns. No it's been good. I just yeah. slipped, no covered in no mud. I hate the <laughs> All the stuff with the uh, the airsoft guns and extras shooting people and the whole beginning sequence with Mr. Wright. We actually filmed in Christmas Common in Oxfordshire. We had the most extras we've ever had. Uh, we had the most guns we've ever had in one place. And we had the most sort of shots we ever had to do in one day. Uh, and that really was challenging for a lot of the people. One of the advantages we had during our shoot in Oxfordshire uh, was we had something like four cameras. Um, and so at times we were doing sort of four different angles of different scenes. Uh, and so we needed to do one scene uh, once to get four different angles. And we can still cut it together to make it interesting. So there are 42 visual effects shots in Always Wear a Seatbelt, which is the biggest number of visual effects shots we've had on any film. The vast majority of these are gunshots. So basically what's involved in having a gunshot is 
you have a gun fire on set and that normally creates a smaller, because we use uh, airsoft guns, that doesn't actually create a flash because they work on compressed air. So what we have to do in post-production is find a video of a gun being fired with of the uh, flash of flame that comes out of the barrel of a gun when it's fired and then put that on top of the uh, shot to make it look like it's a real gun. The other visual effects shots that were notable in this film was at the end of the film we had the mortar fire. You wouldn't think mortar fire would be very difficult but it's a step beyond what we've had to do before because it required us to actually create, make craters that stay on the landscape after we, after each uh, mortar shot. This is the sort of thing you wouldn't normally notice is there, but if it wasn't there, it would be very obvious. So the Isle of Wight uh, filming was relatively successful. We got all the angles we wanted to do. Um, unfortunately, the car actually broke down uh, just before we were going to do a final few shots. We actually initially planned for the car uh, to go crashing into a fence, which would make more sense as to why he goes over the bonnet. Um, but just as we did those few shots where the mortar fire is coming down around him, the car actually broke down and we couldn't get it started again. So we have to sort of improvise and that's something I suppose you have to do a lot when you're making films is improvise. Uh, sometimes things don't go according to plan and so we made the best of a bad situation and the car uh, in the final shot where he's lying out of the, the front of the, of the car is actually the exact place it broke down. Thank <laughs> you.